Okay, it's the end of the session. This is Penelope's Roadmap to Success. Penelope being a short snouted dog and a hot day. She is inside drinking some water uh, with her buddy, uh, Akila. Uh, cool name. Um, all right, so uh, basically we start off uh, talking about, uh, I feel like a healthcare worker. Um, I got the lines for wearing the mask. And I'm wearing red. You should wear red on Fridays to support the healthcare workers out there saving people with coronavirus. So uh, basically, uh, we start off by talking about exercise. Um, Frenchies are not really uh, high endurance dogs, but they're spazzy little spurty dogs. And so they definitely need some exercise. Mo your average dog needs an hour's worth of exercise a day. Um, the guardians here are taking her for a walk when it's not too hot, but the walks that they were taking her on were a little bit long. And so you're noticing after about a mile, she was stopping. And that's probably a little bit too long of a walk for a Frenchie, unless it's like the perfect conditions, like you know, 50s or 60s outside. Um, so basically what I recommend that you go to a shorter walk um, and remember on a walk they burn more energy by sniffing than by walking. Uh, so if she's not sniffing get some finely shredded cheese and kind of put a little sliver on this side of the driveway and then after the next driveway a little bit on the other side. Not no, in random places so she never knows where it is. We want to promote her sniffing and walking around and sniffing the ground looking for cheese or treats or other things. Dogs smell the way that we see in terms of experience in the world. So if you can get the dog to smell uh, sniff on walks, it's gonna really be helpful. It's draining of energy, it's stimulating, it's comforting, it's relaxing, it really has a lot of benefits for the dog. So um, so instead of having a circuit, think of a duration. I'm gonna walk 20 minutes, 10 minutes. So if I have 20 minutes for the walk, I walk 10 minutes this way, cross the street after 10 minute mark, come back for the other 10 minutes we have fresh sniffs. I don't care if they're only good to two houses because my goal is not a duration, uh, a distance, it's a duration. Okay, so other things that we could do uh, that'll help um, getting a snuffle mat and feeding her out of a snuffle mat. Now right now she's kind of free fed with a slow feeder so I'd recommend what you do is put the food down, you eat something first, a piece of celery, just something in five tiny bites. Then give her permission to eat and use that passive training or celebrate. So every time she takes her first bite of food, come up with a funny word that means to eat. Call it milanesa or you know whatever you want to say, your favorite restaurant, favorite food. So when she takes her first bite of food for about three or four months, she hears the word fajitas. Well after a while fajitas means I get to go eat. And then it's a, oh, command word, almost an accent right out there. Uh, drive safely out there, people. Um, all right, so um, let me see, what else? Uh, so um, fetch is a good way to burn energy. Um, the doggy Stairmaster, throwing the treat up and down the stairs. Now, uh, remember for that, all those things, the treat goes in the mouth first, they hear the command word immediately after this. So treat should always be delivered first before you say the command word. Remember here they hear the first word you say, so don't say good sit, just say the word sit. Uh, or come or Jamaica for the bottom of the stairs. So for, I may remember to exercise with an empty stomach at first and check with your vet because there are some activities that are recurring that can be not not great for dogs to do. We want to make sure we're not doing anything bad. Like if you're, there's a family member that's watching it, we have a couple puppies in the family. Puppies probably don't want to do these repetitive uh, activities because they can uh, cause some bone development issues. Okay, so um, let me see. Also, you can Google scent games. It's another great way to exercise. If you forget how to do any of these things, message me. I have videos I can show you about the doggy Stairmaster and all the rest of those things. And please don't hesitate if you do have questions. I have a lot of people that don't want to bug me. I would rather you bug me. It's normal the first week or two to have questions. Don't wait six months because you'll forget and your dog's already created those behaviors. So let me know right away. Um, we also talked about the importance of rules and how dogs learn versus how people learn. Now, dogs need to repetition, consistency, and good timing. You have three seconds to correct or reward the dog for them to make the connection. But every time you deviate from that, they get confused. So if you enforce the rule this time and don't enforce the next time, you don't go back to zero, but you lose a lot of your progress. So you'll be very consistent in terms of enforcing the rules. Um, also, uh, good attention and bad attention from us is the same thing. So if the dog jumps at the door or chews the carpet or attacks the other dog and we correct it verbally or we chastise or we go pick the dog up or whatever it is, those are all looked at as positives for the dog. So um, when they're playing, like we talked in the video above, Put your hands here on their hips and walk away and pull that dog backwards and give those dogs those breaks. Now, if your gut tells you that something's wrong with Penelope, intercede early. Uh, be careful with the treats that are on the ground and, uh, and things along the lines. Penelope redirected aggressively to me a little bit when we dropped a treat trying to get the puppy to drop a, uh, an object. And so I was able to, what I did is I grabbed her back and I held her by her harness and I was able to prevent her from actually, actually reaching me. And once the resource is gone, it was gone. So if that is, if you do notice that when the other dog has, a, has an item or she has an item and she gets very possessive and really aggressive about it, let me know. We can set up a one hour follow-up session if we need to. But I always like my clients to spend a, a month going over the stuff we're talking about now, and because a lot of my clients, that takes care of the problem. 
Um, okay, so and also remember exercise can set your dogs up for success. Before you get the dogs together, like I talked about in the video above, make sure that you exercise them first and they get 10 minutes to recover. Before guests come over, take her to the dog, do the stairs for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. And again, play with the number, quantity of repetitions till you find out what the right amount is for each individual activity. And that way you can set your dog up for success because you depleted that excess energy. And then we didn't let them go crazy and let things go too far. All right, so, um, so those are uh, forms of exercise. Uh, try to do those every two to four hours with an empty stomach and come up with a routine and a rhythm. Dogs, uh, when things are on a routine basis, that can help them feel a little bit more comfortable uh, if they know what's coming next. So basically, uh, come up with something that's reasonable for your lifestyle, ideally every couple hours. And if your dog comes up to you and is being naughty or is nudgy for attention or whatever it is, ask yourself, how long has it been since the dog had to exercise? Or ask yourself, how long has it been since it's had a nap? Remember at Doggy Daycare, ask Danielle and the wonderful people over at Barks and Brews, hey, we'd like to see her get a couple of timeouts. So what I'd like to do is, can we let her play for about two hours and then give her about an hour in a kennel with a bully stick away from the other dogs? Give her a chance to reset her batteries, hopefully take a nap, then let her play for another couple hours, then she gets another nap. Uh, and so maybe she gets two one hour breaks in between the day. So if she's there for eight hours, she's like three hours a nap, you know, two and a half hours a nap, and then another hour, and then I get picked up. So that's a nice way to set them up for success. And that's one of the reasons we like recommended Barks and Brews is Danielle and the crew there do a really good job of listening and they do accommodate. Now they can't always accommodate you for everything, but if you ask them, they're probably pretty good about helping you out with that. Okay, um, so uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, rules, we talked about the importance of rules. Um, remember that good attention and bad attention is the same thing like I just mentioned, but remember dogs probe to determine where the boundary or the limit is. So if I'm probing over here, if I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I go out past the boundary and I, they correct me. So then that's how dogs learn. So remember if your dog's coming back over and over again, they're not being defiant, they're probing to see if you're consistent and that's how they identify that as a rule or a boundary or a limit. So some of the rules we went over, not being allowed on the furniture, I would order those X mats and put them on the furniture like we talked about. Um, if you have difficulty getting her to go to the dog bed, let me know, I have a video for that. Um, get those, uh, and put those X mats up, one for each cushion at first, and eventually you can start reducing them. Um, and uh, do, maybe when you, the reduction should come about a month in. So we want to get out of, in a habit of not getting on the furniture. Remember, you can always go down to her level, she just can't come up to yours. Um, all right, we also uh, talked about sitting at the door, and that's the pre-MAC. And so pre-MAC, remember, is a less desirable behavior achieves me a more desirable behavior. I come to the door and I look, sit, and that sitting achieves me the privilege of going in or out of the door. So that will condition the dog to sit to ask to go out the door. So, um, so and if the dog barks, I would just walk away, and, or if it's whimpering or doing anything else you want. Let's say it sits and barks, well, I'd still walk away because I don't like the barking. And when it sits silently, that's when the door opens. Um, and don't even look at your puppy when it barks. Oh, there you go. Well, Literally what I just talked about just happened behind the camera, that's okay. Um, there we go. Um, so let me see, other rules. Um, so sit, for the sit, for the door to come in and out of the backyard, to sit to go in and out the door to the garage, sit to come in and out of the kennel, sit to go in and out of the long-term confinement area, the car when you're on visits and all that fun stuff. Um, also, um, come, sit, that's, that's celebrating. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Um, let me see, what else? Um, God, there was something else I wanted to talk about with her for, uh, it'll come back to me. All right, uh, so um, let me see, other rules, not be allowed within seven feet of you when you're eating, or not allowed in the kitchen where you're preparing food. You have to sit uh, before I put you on the leash. When a dog does this, if I push the dog off, I'm gonna activate their acquisition reflex. So I'm just gonna become boring, the dog jumps down, I would then tell it to sit, she ran away, so I didn't. But when I tell the dog to sit, that's when I'm petting, I'm rewarding for a sit, not for jumping up on me or getting off of me. The only way to get off of me to get a reward for that is jumping back on me. Okay, let me see, what else? Um, and we went over uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Come, that's passive training right there. So Penelope came to me, I didn't ask her to. When she did, I petted her under her chin, just a little that nose up, and I said the word come. And I petted her a little bit. So, oh, oh. that's still play. But she's running around and she's outside. So the puppy grabbed a bully stick. And now the puppy's running around and Penelope's chasing her. This is funny, you can see right there. Um, that, uh, right there. There you go. There you go, perfect. That was perfect. 
So when there are high value items, we didn't know, we thought that she ate that other. So when you do have the puppies over, no toys, put all the toys up, pull the bully sticks up. Remember that can be a reward. Oh yeah. And so just hold on to her, just hold on to the harness because that'll give you better. There we go. And so she's gonna be over there. So what I would do is, uh, is uh, probably have to, we're outside, so probably maybe put her inside, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, but uh, you wanna teach your puppy to drop something that the other puppy will learn in our puppy classes. And uh, so just, like I said, we wanna create a situation where it's positive. That was okay while they're chasing, but once you, when the puppy stood still, that's when it became a, a different, I want that resource. And bully sticks are a very high value item, so when they have the bully sticks, remember the little tip, drill a hole through the back of the bully stick, uh, through the end of it and zip it to the far side of that long-term confinement area. So when she's chewing on it, she's turned away from the other dog. She can't see it and the other dog can't get close enough to her to provoke that response. Anytime a dog is reactive, what you want to do is increase the distance. All right, going back to what I was talking about before is passive training and petting with a purpose. Penelope ran up to me, I petted her and said, come. So passive training is waiting for the dog to voluntarily offer you the behavior they want. Within three seconds of them offering it on their own, you pet them and then you mark why you're petting them. So she comes to me, I pet her and say, come. She sits down at me, I sit, I pet her and say, sit. Remember, they hear the first word you say, so just say sit. She lays down, pet her and say, crash or chill or down or whatever your word is. When she takes her first bite of food, call it meatball or fajitas or lasagna, whatever you want. So now we're rewarding the dog for doing the things that we want. That will motivate the dog to want to do them more often. Most of us train our dogs to do things we don't want because it jumps up when we come home and we pet it. Well, I got petted for jumping. Or I said, stop jumping on me. Well, I got your attention, so that's validating as well. So we, the more that we celebrate and reward the thing, dog for the things we want, the more they will offer those behaviors. So use that as your watchwords. If I'm standing here and Penelope walked up and sat down right here and I missed it, somebody says, celebrate to me, I turn and I start petting her and say, celebrate. Or I could also say, uh, not say celebrate, I would pet, pet her and say, sit or down. Uh, so celebrate means you're pointing at somebody else and saying, you're missing an opportunity to reward your dog for doing something you want. We also, uh, and, uh, and that will take you about a month or two to get in the habit of, but then your dog will start offering those behaviors. The other thing we talked about was passing, uh, petting with a purpose, which is if I want to pet the dog or the dog wants me to pet it, the dog jumps up and nudges me or paws at me or barks at me, if I pet it, then I'm saying that's the way to ask. So next time the dog jumps up on you, tell it to sit. If it sits in that three second window, pet it in her shin and say sit. If it doesn't sit, remember playing hard to get works great for dogs. Uh, dog training just as well as it works for playing hard to get, plays great, great for dating. I've stepped on my punchline. So show the dog I have other things to do. I asked you to sit. If you can't be bothered to sit, that's cool. There's no punishment. But I'm on to the next thing and now you have to wait a little bit longer. Remember to use, uh, so if you want to pet the dog, you still tell her to sit. If she doesn't sit, then she doesn't get that attention, pet your wife, do something else. And after a while, the dog will learn that I can't tell the human what to do. I have to ask and better than ask, I have to pay for the privilege of their attention and I pay for it through a currency of obedience, and they'll prepay for the attention. When they do, make sure you pet for that, otherwise they'll go back to jumping like that. Um, I use the watchword of paycheck if someone's pet forgot to pet with a purpose. So if somebody comes in and I'm petting Penelope and they see I'm petting her and she's standing, they say paycheck, I stop petting her, I tell her to sit, if she sits, I pet her on her chin and say sit, and I say actually I asked her to sit, and when you open the door, she stood up and I continue petting her, but thank you for pet reminding me, I do forget and I often pet without a purpose. So you're petting your dog for a reason. Now we went over the escalating consequences um, and, that, and then we use those for your kitchen. So practice that in the kitchen. Remember, microwave that piece of bacon, put it on your counter, pretend like you're doing your meal prep work or you're watching the dog out of the corner of your eye. And if you forget how to do that, if you go to my website and search for where it says, uh, search for the invert word invisible or kitchen, there are videos that explain how to do that. Um, what do you think? I think that's pretty much about it. Now, um, uh, if you have any questions, please message me. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. So don't be afraid to call me or text me if you have questions. I don't care how late at night it is. Uh, if I'm asleep, I'll get to it the next day. But I will be mad at you if you have questions and don't message me because I can't help you if you don't message me. All right, well, um, the way I say this is Penelope, but Penelope's inside. Uh, so this is Penelope's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.